Colton's in the back. Didn't even think twice about doing that.
We've got a couple minutes before we begin, uh, so I'll just remind you, come back every Wednesday uh, for Lent. Uh, we'll be here. Always a nice group at the noontime service, and uh, the service will be shorter on other Wednesdays. About half an hour, maybe 35 minutes at the top. Um, or if you're able to make the evening, then you can come for dinner at 6 o'clock starting next Wednesday, no dinner tonight, and then service will be at 7. Again, shorter service uh, throughout the rest of Lent. And if you also remember, during the other Wednesdays, not today, uh, the other Wednesdays, you get to choose what we're singing. So whoever gets here first and finds the hymns in the hymnal, okay, uh, you get to choose. If you will, I invite you to either remain seated or to kneel uh, for the beginning of the service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience in our lives, our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people our anger at our own frustration, and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts, and our dishonesty in daily life and work, our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done for our blindness to human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. 
for our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Um, you may be seated or come and forward to receive the imposition of ashes uh, this day. As you hear the words, remember that you are dust and the dust you shall return. Uh, but we'll also talk about how uh, God came into this world and put on dust himself. That even though we return to dust, uh, in the end he raises that dust up. Uh, to new life in him. Uh, so I invite you to begin this 40-day journey to the cross by coming forward and receiving uh, the ashes uh, for those who desire. Invite the congregation to rise. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, does not desire the death of sinners, but rather that we may turn from their wick our wickedness and live. Therefore, we implore him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do on this day, that the rest of our life may be pure and holy, and that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and contrite hearts that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you full pardon and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading comes from Joel, the prophet. Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. And rend your hearts, not your garments. 
return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, consecrate the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, even nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare your people, O Lord, and make not your heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. The Lord answered and said to his people, Behold, I am sending you grain, wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied. And I will no more make you a reproach among the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Second lesson is from 2 Corinthians chapters 5 and 6. Paul writes, Therefore we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him known to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Working together with him, then we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in a favorable time I listened to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way by great endurance and afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. By purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love. By truthful speech and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well-known, as dying and behold we live, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I invite you to rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel and the Gospel verse. according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward, but when you pray, Go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. 
and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Jesus said, And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroy, and where thieves do not break and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I think you turned it off, Jeannie. Don't worry about it, Judy. I... <laughs> you got it. Okay, it's coming. Um, let's pray. Oh, Lord, pour out your spirit upon us and uh, just help us to receive all the gifts you bring us here in worship at the beginning of this Lenten season to share these gifts with each other in our fellowship and to bear them out to the world in our witness. In the name of Christ, amen. All right, here we go. Great. So um, the theme for our midweek services, not our Sundays. You have to come on Sunday to know what the theme is for Sundays. Okay. Our theme for Wednesdays is going to be the beauty of creation. And so every Wednesday, starting today, we're going to look at a different day of creation in the account from Genesis chapter 1. And uh, each week, another day. Uh, there are six Wednesdays in Lent where we have services. The seventh Wednesday is during Holy Week, and so we don't do Wednesday that week. We do Thursday and Friday. So uh, starting today, six, six weeks on six days of uh, the beauty of creation. So I want to start off today with some pictures. So uh, I took some pictures. These are all just my personal pictures from when went out to uh, see Kathy's folks in Washington State. They're up on a mountain and a uh, mountain in the distance and beautiful flowers in front. So it's a, it's a, for me, it's a pretty picture. I like it, okay? Uh, part of the beauty of creation. But uh, what's the difference between uh, this picture and that one? Okay, yeah, this one's a little darker than the large thing. Okay, uh, here's another one from the trip. Oh, uh, you can't see the, uh, true, the, the water's green there uh, with the true colors. It's just gorgeous, it's be beautiful. You wanted to jump in. It, it looked like Hawaii, but it wasn't. It was, <laughs> it was Washington, I'm sure it was freezing, uh, but just gorgeous. Uh, but again, the difference between that and, oh, look, it's getting a little darker. Okay. Which, which, which one do you like better? Mm -hmm. okay. That's not in Washington. That was on my dining room table in uh, <laughs> a little butterfly garden uh, type thing. And so we found some caterpillars outside, sick them in, eating some parsley from the backyard uh, that we were growing. Uh, just, you know, the beauty of creation. Uh, cool, cool guy. He, he, did, he did end up cocooning and turning into a beautiful butterfly. Um, okay. But again, difference between that and, oh. Do you, do, you under, do you understand that it's the same caterpillar in both pictures? Okay? Same one. Okay? It's the same picture, just one's dark, okay? So now I'll give you my favorite picture is, well, this is it. The only problem is you can't, what? See it, okay? It is a picture. This is not just the blank thing. The picture is there. It's just all the light has been taken away, okay? So you can't see the beauty 
even though the beauty is there. Okay? Get it? Do you want to see the beauty now? Oh, isn't that cute? <laughs> I love ice cream. I mean, my daughter. I mean, my daughter. <laughs> my daughter. <laughs> okay. The beauty, the beauty of uh, creation. So, on the first day of creation, you remember what happened? Not that you were there. Okay. Uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Hey, that's kind of interesting. The earth was void. What's that mean? Okay. Um, and darkness was over the face of the deep. Could you see the face of the deep then? No. Okay. Didn't see the darkness was over it. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Notice how um, Genesis begins. It's not like it's completely from scratch. There is stuff there. Okay, there's earth, but it's void. I don't know what that, I don't, those are trying to use words to describe something that the words probably can't describe. Okay. Uh, but the water's there, okay, and the Spirit of God is hovering over it. And then verse 3, which is the first, okay, so this is the first day. This is what happened. The first paragraph is like, that's what was there, okay? And now the creation event begins with verse 3. And God said, yeah, let there be light. Let there be light, okay? Um, again, the, the thing is, the beauty is there. The beauty is there, but the difference is, there you can't see it. Light lets you see it. Okay? And God saw that the light was good. God separated the light from the darkness. He called the light, what? Day. And the darkness he called, and there was the evening, and there was morning the first day. That too, by the way, is, is significant. Uh, um, a Hebrew day starts in the evening. Okay? So, so a day in Hebrew culture starts with darkness and comes into light. Okay, we do our day in the middle, in the middle of the night. Okay, their day starts as soon as the sun goes down. That's the mark. That's a new, oh, where it's a new day. It's like we're. We, it's almost as though every day is reliving the creation event. We start from darkness and we come to light. We start from darkness, we go to light. I want to be careful when, when we talk about scripture and such. Sometimes when we talk about light and darkness, we, we talk about light being good and evil and darkness being what? Evil. Yeah, well, again, time and time again, no, darkness is dark. <laughs> okay. uh, with the kids in chapel this morning, I, you know, I asked how many of them ever were or still are, and I think most of them still are, afraid of the dark, <laughs> okay? okay? And why are they afraid of the dark? Uh, because you don't know what's there, <laughs> you know, because someone might get you. And, you know, every time, you know, I, I got kids and we got night lights for both the twins in their, in their room because, you know, as, as kids, like adults, we're afraid of what we can't see. When we can't see, we make things up. And, uh, you know, whenever our twins are afraid of the dark, all you got to do is turn on the light. The light does not make the monsters go away. The light just shows you there never were monsters in the first place. Okay? The light just reveals. So here at the beginning of the Lenten season on Ash Wednesday, as we start this series, uh, The Beauty of God's Creation, it's important to understand that the, that the creative event is, begins with light. Light is meant to reveal. Okay. The purpose of light is meant to reveal. Okay. And so what we find out is that the creative event is meant to be a revealing event. Now, 
Now, we could easily jump and, and say, well, it's meant to reveal what? It's meant to reveal creation. No, because now he's going to start making more and more stuff. Rather, beginning with light as a, as, a, as, a, as a revealing event, the whole creation is put in a process to reveal what? The creator. So creation, beginning with light, is meant to reveal, show to us the creator. Okay? It's, not, it's not a matter of battling good versus evil. Okay? Let the light come and get rid of the darkness. It's, it's, I'm going to create so that I might be known. And not just me in general, but specifically, well, that becomes the problem, is because we have trouble in the beginning knowing who this God is. And even though the creative event pushes forth the revealing of God, we get confused with what we see alluded to already here in the beginning because what do we have still at the beginning um, God separated the light from the darkness okay so is darkness all gone no okay uh, because the light is called day and the, and the darkness is called night and so from the beginning we find that there are both periods of, of light and periods of dark and in fact, we see this then as, as you know, the first humans are born, uh, Adam and Eve, and, and especially when they choose the fruit of the tree that they shouldn't have. In the, in the dark um, advice of the serpent, okay, uh, where they don't see clearly, they don't see at all, and then that darkness continues to shroud over people for generation after generation to come. And in fact, what we find is that as creation was started to reveal God to us, we still have, the light isn't complete and so we still struggle with what we see. And uh, the Old Testament in many ways is full of people struggle in what they see with God and they often see a scary God, an angry God, a punishing God, um, a, a God who is out to get them or a God who doesn't even care. And uh, because they see God in all these ways, what do they often do? They often run away. Okay? They often turn away. They often make up their own gods. Uh, and do other things apart from them because they don't see clearly. Even though God in his love, God in his desire to shine the light, continues to send messengers to kind of shine a flashlight on the truth. And so one of those messengers is, is Joel today, okay? Joel, one of the prophets, and, and, and he cries out to the people. He says, Instead of running away from the God that you're freaking out because of or because you think he doesn't care about you or for, he's for someone else, return to him. Okay? Come on back. Come on back, guys. And why? Because your God, okay, even though you don't always see this because the darkness that is still present, okay, your God is what? He is gracious. Okay, you know what gracious means? Gracious means giving without deserving, okay? It's, a, not, it's different from fair, okay? Gracious and fair are like opposites. How many of us at times want God to be fair? That, that's, that's such... That I'm, with the twins, I'm not allowed to say stupid, but they're not here today. So that's such a stupid idea. Uh, why, would, why would we want God to be fair? Because if he's going to be fair, he's got to be fair on all sides of that. I, we just confessed our sins in the beginning of the service. If he's fair, then we probably wouldn't have made it to the amen. <laughs> okay? We don't want fair. 
God, please don't make fair. Rather, be gracious. And that's what he is. He's a, he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger. You think he's fast anger, slow to anger. And he gets out of anger. And his, and his anger, like a parent, okay, is fed with his desire to keep you safe. I, I, my anger with my kids is, is because they're doing something that's going to cause them or someone else harm. And it's to get their attention. It's, it's purposeful. Our anger is to get their attention. It's not to do them harm. Oh, my goodness. And I'm, I'm an evil father, and, and I know better than to try to harm my kids out of my anger. Okay? How much more so the good one whose anger is there to... And it's slow. And it's just to get your attention. Okay? That's all it is. Get your attention. So that you might know that he's abounding in what? Steadfast love. You know what abounding is? It's like if your pocket is full, it's full. You got, you know, you got. if it's abounding, then it's spilling out. Okay? Spilling out. That's the, that's the love of God. That's the love of God. But in the Old Testament, that flashlight, the prophets came to, to shine on, on the truth of God was only so bright. And so the plan from the beginning has always been that God himself will show himself in the midst of a creation which begins with let there be light let it be known ultimately it's going to be known when God himself comes down where where words such as remember that you are dust and the dust you shall return in the darkness those sound like pretty scary words don't they okay but in Christ we see and wow, God has put that dust upon himself. He has come into the same flesh as you and me. Okay. And in Christ, all of a sudden, the, and the people were beginning to get this in his ministry, not fully, beginning to get this, that, that all of a sudden in Christ, this was someone whom we could approach. This was someone we could be with. This was someone who spoke differently, who, who had power that we hadn't seen before and who rejected no one. Okay. There was a space for everyone with him and, and, and he would reach out and touch you and you could reach out and touch him and healing would take place. And yet even when in the darkness the world turned on him, okay, out of darkness, I mean, that's what it was. It's like, it's like the world had closed their eyes and, and plugged their ears, and all of a sudden they're killing a Jesus. We see, you know, you know, when you're in a pressure situation, the true self comes out, doesn't it? <laughs> and sometimes it's pretty ugly. And yet, when the pressure came on Jesus, what do we see? Do we, do we see him getting upset with everyone? Do we see him trying to stop everyone? Stop hurting me! Stop hurting me! No, he doesn't cry out, does he? Does he, does he threaten them? Uh, does he get angry? Talk about slow to anger. They're, they kill him, and he's not getting angry. Okay. Uh, what do we see? Rather, we see a servant. Okay. We see a bounding love. So that not only does he die, I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna fight you and you're killing me. I'm not gonna fight you. Okay? Go ahead. If this is what you want, I love you so much, you can have it, I'll die. But then on the third day, he comes back. Because he doesn't want to leave them or forsake them, but rather to continue to embrace and to welcome and to show forth, to reveal, to shine light, to let us see the true nature of God. 
Uh, I told the kids it'd be great um, during this Lenten season that every time they worry about whether God loves them or not, or whether God's angry with them or not, or whether God cares about them or not, rather than making up stories, which we do in the, in, in the dark, just find a cross to look at. Whether it's here in church, for you in the, in the mirror for a little bit today, okay? Um, in your home, um, even if you don't have crosses hanging, I can guarantee you can find just naturally occurring cross shapes. And every time to let that remind you of what the light reveals about God. And in so doing, to, um, to disperse all the pretend stuff that you make up <laughs> in the dark. And so in this age right now, we continue to live in light and dark, in day and night, okay? But the, but the, but the reason for that is God gives us this routine of, of, of light and dark, of day and night, so that we might come, in the midst of the chaos, come to trust him. Okay. Trust him. Okay. Because when we can trust him, even when we act as creatures of the dark, and he still shines the light of his love, we're able to trust his love and to understand his true nature and, and really, in many ways, be ready for the joys that are yet to come. Uh, creation, back when God said, let there be light in those six days, was not an event that happened and is done, okay, but rather which has a journey which doesn't get completed until the age which is not yet here, the day of resurrection. On that day of resurrection, then whatever was begun way back when gets perfected and completed. And so one more, one more passage for you is, um, while we live in the age of day and night where we still don't see everything but man, he's shining, and if our eyes are on the cross, then we can see clearly the time will come, Revelation chapter 22. Then, in this new, new day, they will see his face. Won't that be beautiful? And his name will be on their foreheads. What do we have now on our foreheads? Okay, mark of the darkness. But it's in the shape of the cross to remind us of light, that even in the darkness, even in the brokenness, even in... In, 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 even in the dirtiness of our own sins, the light of Christ still shines. There's nothing you can do that can, that can get rid of the love of God for you. Then his name will be on our foreheads. And then verse 5, and night will be no more. They will need no light of lamp or sun for the Lord God, and they will reign forever and ever. Okay. The creative event gets fulfilled when there's no longer day and night. There's just day. There's no longer struggle with, ah, does he love me or not? And you just know. Then all will be revealed. And you, having learned to trust him, <laughs> will have nothing to do but rejoice. So here we begin. Uh, beginning of Lent, beginning of creation, still living in light and darkness, still struggling at times, and yet the flashlight shines right on the cross and says, don't, don't forget. Okay? Take, eat, do this in remembrance. Okay? Because... As you live through light and dark, there are times when you're going to forget. So keep coming to the cross. Keep coming to the broken body and poured out blood until that day 
where darkness will be no more and all will be fully revealed in a way that we can see fully. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let's rise to sing about surveying the wondrous cross. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Return our attention to prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of all things, with gladness we give thanks for all your goodness. We bless you for the love which has created and which sustains us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, through whom you have made known your will and grace. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, the Comforter, for your Holy Church, for the means of grace, for the lives of all faithful and good people, and for the hope of the life to come. Help us to treasure in our hearts all that our Lord has done for us, and enable us to show our thankfulness by lives that are wholly given to your service. Lord, in your mercy, send the light of your truth into all the earth, O Lord. Raise up faithful servants of Christ to labor in the gospel, both at home and in distant lands. In your mercy, strengthen uh, churches throughout the world, especially in times of trial. Make them steadfast, abounding in the work of the Lord, and let their faith and zeal for the gospel refresh and renew the witness of your people everywhere. Lord, in your mercy. Preserve our nation in justice and honor, that we may lead a peaceable life of integrity. Grant health and favor to all who bear office in our land, and help them to serve this people according to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort with the grace of your Holy Spirit, all who are in sorrow or need, 
sickness or adversity, and especially those whom we now name out loud or in our hearts. Remember those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near. Bring consolation to those in sorrow or mourning, and to all grant a measure of your love, taking them into your tender care. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share that peace with each other. We're going to remain standing and go through uh, offering. If you haven't, if you have an offering you'd like to give, just put it in the basket uh, in the plate before you leave. That'd be great. And we're going to go right on into the communion service, so we can go forward. There we go. Okay, we'll go right there. Great. Okay. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the evil one and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might pre be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, in love for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who trust in him should not perish but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
we're going to keep it simple for communion. Just come up this one side for communion. Receive uh, the, the blood of Christ, and then you can return back up the other side of the main aisle here. Okay, so we'll... The body of Christ given for you. We can rise. Now may this body and blood strengthen and preserve you, steadfast and true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. We pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage that on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
peace and serve the Lord.